Hello YouTube, it is Damien, it is the Rise of Nation, it's episode 64 and today we have got the final round of qualifying, the fourth round, I'm pretty sure that after the fourth round it is then, um, it is then uh, fourth round, Champions Park, fourth round and then it is the group stage of the Euro 2 Cup. As you can see here in the league path, fourth round, um, we have got Botev Polyadev, we'll talk about them Polyadev, Pol... Polvidev. Um, as you can see, though, we avoided some big teams, and that's where we're going to start. You know, talk about big teams in um, in the terms of the Euro Two: Wolfsburg, Braga. They're playing each other actually, which is pretty insane. Um, Ferhavar, who we lost to last year, we avoided. We we avoided Zaragoza and Ghent. They're actually playing each other as well. We avoided Wolves. We avoided Sassuolo. Um, PAOK probably are better than us as well. We avoided Shakhtar, avoided Rennes, even avoided SC Hernevin there at, um, in the Eredivisie. Um, even, um, I can never pronounce it, Victoria. Um, all those sort of sides are probably teams on paper that, you know, they would go into this competition expecting to make it to the um, to the group stage. And, you know, if you're like a Wolves or, um, you know, Wolves, Wolfsburg, Braga, um, you're probably, if you're Shakhtar, uh, you, you probably, so swallow, you're probably thinking you can go really deep in this tournament, and there you are. Put it to know, there is three Danish teams, including myself in here. You've also got Sonders, who won the league playoff against AAB to make it here, and they made the fourth round of qualifying. And FC Midland, who won the cup, are still going really strong. And to be quite fair, apart from playing Hadjak split, um, I expect Midland to get through theirs. On paper, we probably, this is the easiest draw that we've had out of the last three games. You know, obviously, uh, we played Vienna. If you didn't see that, Vienna was a tight game on paper, but we did beat them. Um, we then played, um, we played, played Aussie Jack last episode, uh, and we dominated them over two legs, and we nearly threw it away. You know, when you have 30-odd shots at home and you only win 2-1, you concede second minute in, and then you have 20 shots away from home and don't score, there's always that case to BFM, they score one and they go through on away goals. Mercifully, it did not happen. Um, since we last met, though, we obviously played the one game here against Randers. It's also a brand new day, and I've gone to work and everything. I've come home, and it's all been about get on here. We changed a couple things slightly here because I was complaining that we weren't scoring enough goals with the hot chance we were getting. It was also Randers, right? Um, what I did change is obviously Hoge came in and looked really good. Kenny went to ball winning, um, box to box. Um, he can play it quite well. But Yepi. When you compare him to Faint God, right? And Yepi's unbelievable. Yepi can play anywhere. And you can see why I do want to play him as a box-to-box because he's just so good at everything, right? When Yepi plays Shadow Striker, right? He's a natural better dribbler than um, Faint God. He's a natural better first. He's got a natural better first touch. And he's got better finishing, with better composure, right? Apart from probably the physicals of Faint God being better, Faint God just doesn't get on the ball and run with it enough in that role to create as much damage. Yepi went out there, he scored four. Now look, not all four were Shadow Striker sort of goals, right? Um, but it was the runs that was being made. Um, second thing is Oscar Sandu missed a hat for one ones yet again, but getting in the right areas and got himself a couple of assists as well. Also, a bit annoyingly, we were 5-0 up at half time, <laughs> um, and the boys just decided to just shut off and give away two goals, because to be, to be honest, M. Pagesi has been really good so far, and I think just to aid his development, we really need to make sure he starts keeping a bit more clean sheets and starts average rating a little bit better. He's been really good, though, for me. Um, he's making a hat full of saves. Um, there was nothing good done about the goals here today. Um, apart from that, we obviously brought a few people off the bench as well um, to rotate here for this game. I'm still not 100% even starting filming. I've been telling the stream we are currently live. Links down below. I don't know what I'm going to do because Yepi, right, Played so well in here. This is the typical highlight that you just don't see from Faint God, right? Is Oscar's here, but Loch Yepi. Usually Faint God in the Shadow Striker or even in his advanced playmaker and attack, he gets forward, but he doesn't make this run into make a one-on-one -on -one situation, you know? Usually he would stop here and try and get on the ball and play someone else in. Yepi just goes, thank you very much. <laughs> Goal, right? Um, free kick, Yepi. He actually won the free kick as well. He ran in, guy tackled him. Um, yet again, you don't get that with Oscar, um, with thank God. He then scored a penalty to make it free, and I think it was another penalty here that we won as well, and he made it 4-0, and it was really, really good. 4-0 um, up here. We then get one right before half time. Good ball into Yepi. Finds Andreas. Andreas there gets towards the byline. Cuts it back stick. Dolchek heads. Great goal. Um, but yet again, Yepi in and around those areas. I'm really talking myself into playing Yepi in the Shadow Striker role this episode. As you can see, Stupid goal. Marquez never should get caught there. Great ball in. M. Pagesi's just a passenger after that ball in because Hoge can just put it wherever he wants. Um, and then on the break, um, and they made up 5-2, and I was a bit annoyed um, when this went in as well. Look, there's nothing he can do about that, the keeper either. 
Not the best marking, but we're gonna wear it. That's the only thing I will say about today is that not the best marking may be a factor because we've got Bubba playing and it's not great. Um, if we go to Botetev Polividev, um, they're a team that finished second last year in the league. They look pretty decent on paper. Their key player is this guy worth one, 2.1 million. But um, I think the best way to kind of highlight their team, and they've played four games, three wins and a draw. They're the only team not to lose at the moment in the um, in the uh, in the division. If you go to the season preview in the Bulgarian first division, that's what their team is like. Um, they got. Antonev there, who's in goals, he's probably one of the best players in the league. Um, there he is there, the keeper. But, um, you know, there's some regions in this team that you may know. You know, um, Vogel, we nearly signed on a free back um, back a while ago, and then he decided to sign a new contract here. He's been doing very well, the German international. Um, been captain on the 20 level by Germany. He's going to be really good in the future as well. Um, you know, they've got um, a centre-back and a full-back that are both really good. Ivanov is a full-back, looks very promising. Um, and they have a centre back that is really, really, really good as well. Um, and they got Tonev, who was the key player for them. He's probably, arguably, one of the best midfielders in the Bulgarian division. Yes, their league's not as reputable as ours, but at the same time, I still think they're going to be quality to come out and play against as well. Now, look, we're playing at home first. I personally, I hate it playing at home first. I think it's a very big disadvantage, especially on Football Manager Up. If we go out there and have another game of 30 chances, and we do not put the game to bed, we're going to have to go to Hungary, and it's only going to be a matter of time where we don't put games to bed. We didn't put it away against Vienna. We didn't put it away against Osijek, and we don't put it away here today. It's only a matter of time FM turns around and goes, yep, we're going to bite you up the arse now, and you're going to go and get FM, then out you go in the cup. It happened too many times to me at FC Mets last year, where we dominated teams, did not score enough chances, and they would score 75th to 90th minute and send you out. Barcelona anybody if you watch that series you 100 know what i'm talking about when it came to barcelona dominating them at the new camp and then scoring goals anyhow in terms of the team um i think the back four is sorted you know neff's been unbelievable since coming in the australian um and has been great he's averaging a 7.08 over his last five games and otta has been really good we rested him last game marquez is going in and obviously bubba fernandez has to play because of the injury to tony it's now just a question what we're doing here, and I'm tempted to do this. Get Thank you odd in the box-to-box -box midfield role, because he's really good in there, right? And play um, Hanson like this. But in saying that, Joe Hoge, right, is a recent form for me, has been an 8.2 at, at a 6.9 in preseason, 8 in preseason, 7.1 against FC Midland, right? At 8.2 and a 7.3. So for me, right, for me... I think we're going to go Joe Hoge at home. I feel like it allows me to have Thank God as an attacking monster off the bench. Yepi's also one yellow card away from being suspended, so yeah. Plus, Yepi and Zahora have a very good understanding up top and hope that provides goals. Bum the jar on the right hand side, double check, or double check on the left. The rest of the team is self explanatory and hopefully we'll be okay. Score predictions in the chat. I know Dim Sim's now driving home, so I know he's probably going to miss the. Uh, miss the um, Missed the, uh, the start of this first leg. He's driving home from work. I'm just going to put a prediction in for Dim of 2-1. Um, it's the typical Dim Sim prediction. Um, there you go, Dim. If you get it right, uh, Dim, I'll let you know. when you watch. Dim watches all the VODs back as well when he's spare time. So um, even though I know that he popped in to say hello, that he's driving home from work, he'll probably go back tomorrow while I'm at work and watch um, the first part of this stream back for what he's missed, but yeah. Anyhow, um, they're lining up like so. Um, we're pretty similar to what was suggested in the the leagues, in the league uh, stream there, or the league stream, in the league, the tab that we uh, just clicked on before, the Bulgarian First Division. I'm just nervous about the fact that if we concede a, um, if we concede an away goal, I'm nervous. Anyway, their team is that, you know, they've got Antonov in goals, the best Bulgarian. I'm actually scouting him. Um, Holes at right back, the 33-year-old maybe we can get back. Ivanov's obviously at left back. They have got the same two centre-backs that was suggested as well. Um, Vogt's still in there. The striker is in there too. He's really got the Bulgarian striker as well. Like, tap... Tabakov could score at any moment. Um, Mitov is okay. Dima Tonev is actually playing upper line. And they brought in this Bonnev guy, the 23-year-old. Isn't too bad. Maybe lacks a little bit in terms of being an actual midfielder. But, you know, he's not the worst as well. And they've got a decent bench. It'll be an interesting game, this one. Um, I know he's his future here. That's good enough for me for Kenny. Um, I He's been in great form, 7.56. I guess we're about to find out. I guess we're about to find out, to be fair, mate. I don't know. You tell me. Anyhow, let's see how we're going to go. It's them in the yellow. It's us in the white. We're at home. 
in Denmark at the SFB Stadium. I'm looking to ask to go out there, be positive, get on the ball, give them not a sniff. We go out there, we win the game of football. That is what we need to do. And arguably, hopefully, by more than one goal. Anyway, early highlight here, and Holes will throw in there to, not, to Tonev, and we're going to get a press out there on Holes, and back into Robotov, and we can force him longer. we do. In the end, good positioning from Otar, the experienced fullback, and he finds Bub Najan. He can turn and go, and Bub's beating one, still going in his right inside. Might be the second here and get a ball in. He cuts it back to Kenny. His ball in back stick. Dolchek heads. Unfortunately for ourselves, it's just gone over the bar. But yeah, Kenny also loves getting in this box-to-box -box midfielder role because he's naturally very physical for it as well. Um, same as Yepi. Anyway, Dolchek now gets on the ball, back a line there in the net, and he's bullying for Zahora in the channel, finds him. Zahora now steps on it, looks back, cuts it. Hoj, ball in, bum the jar. It's his first goal of the year, and it's 1-0. I think it's hit Ye Yepi, who's trying to get out of the way of the shot of Hoj. Um, if not, it's going to be Hoj's assist. Yet again, though, as a ball-winning midfielder, Hoj just come in and just goes, yeah, I know how to get forward, I know how to go back, I know where I need to be to get on the ball. Um, good hit from him. I think it's kind of hit the centre-back and Yepi and fall in the bum of the jar. Be very interesting to see if Yepi's going to get an assist for that. Um, Hoj has been given the assist, I think, by the 7.1, which is probably fair. 1-0 up, 25 minutes played. Hopefully, we're having Yepi in the hole. We find a couple more goals as well. Anyway, 35 minutes played, dominating the game, but a throw-in in their half, which is never nice. And then there's a long throw, but headed away by Otar. And Zahor is going to get on that one first. He can turn or play Kenny, which he does do the latter. And Kenny now still running from the middle of the park. Has got numbers around him, but he's still bustling big Ken. And in the end, he turns around and lays it back to Otar. Not the worst, but not the option would have taken. And this is not good there on the break. Marquez, though, the former Wolves man, comes across. What a tackle. Bubba now, good ball and a nephew comes inside, finds Hoge. Hoj now knows how to go and travel, and he does. And Dolchek comes inside, gets tackled. Vogut, Boniev, ball back a line. Rabatov, good press from us. We force him long again. Weird highlight. You know, it's a bit of back and forth, which makes me think this could be a big key chance for whoever it falls to. Anyway, Marquez just looks long. Zahora breaks the offside trap. He's in here. He finishes in style. It's 2-0. And in the fourth round of qualifying, we've put a couple chances away, and it's 2-0 SFB. you got to love to see it. In the end, good from Marquez and Otta. Otta, in the end, he finds Neff, um, finds Meff, he finds Marquez again. Just punts it into the space. Ahura goes and finishes. It is 2-0 and all she wrote. And I am really happy with that one there. Now it's all about not conceding an away goal. And we're pretty happy. And the first thing that's happened, as I said, that they've had a shot on target. Mercifully, we didn't see it. 45 minutes play, getting towards halftime. No highlight, thank you. We don't get one, which is really good as well. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is 2-0 SFB with 45 minutes left to play in the first leg. Brilliant. Kenny on a booking, which is not good as well. And it's a highlight, and it's Tonev. We did concede from a set piece last time. It's volleyed and Pegasi. A big save from the big South African at the back stick. And it's still 2-0. And we just need to be a little bit more cautious and make sure we go out there and... Really make sure we put this game away with a third as well. Time's still ticking, though, at the moment. 65 minutes played. Um, Yappy's one card away from suspension. I do rate that as well. I'm just going to get, thank God, into the hole um, is my first change. Uh, you know, 2 new. I don't care if we score a third or not. Um, get Van Gold into the hole. And yeah, 72 minutes played as well. I'm actually going to get Oscar Sandu. He's yet to score out there as well as an inside forward on attack. Um, and just get him coming in and seeing what he can do as well. Um, and we will wait and see what happens in terms of the third change coming up in a minute as well. Um, we might leave it to time waste just to make sure we get home with that, um, without the away goal being scored. Anyway, thank God. Gets on the ball again. His ball looking long. Finds Bub Najar. Could volley it. Doesn't. Gets there. Effort blocked. Still with Bub Najar. Wheels around. Looking for a pass. He lays it back. Kenny. It's deflected off Zahora and gone in. And this is why I don't mind playing Kenny as a box winning, a ball, box to box midfielder. He naturally gets up and down as well like Yepi does. So it's like for like really. Anyway, Bub Najar does well. Gets back on it. Cuts it back one line. It's a good ball from him. Kenny's effort. It's kind of hit centre back. Hits Zahora and gone in. We don't care how they go. It's 3-0. And we're for, look, all I've done is just put Yepi in the hole, and since then, goals have flown. And who knows? We could get a fourth. They're playing really high. We could exploit the space here with Zahora. And Otar looked for it, but he just didn't execute. Goalkeeper in Antonov. If we can force him long and win it back, would be great. And away goal, though, wouldn't be nice. And Galchev beats Otar and is coming in here. And Pagesi, watch out, mate. They're coming. Good ball in. And Pagesi, though, good positioning at his near stick. And holds very well. Does the new goalkeeper. Highlight again, though. 
And Nuno Tomas, headed away by Thank God. Tonev again, still going with it. Still their highlight. Have an overlap on the other side. Instead, it's Marcel Voga and Pegesi. It's the best game he's probably played in a YouTube game for you, YouTube. He's made three or four outstanding saves, has the South African. I feel like everything's kind of coming down this right-hand side. I'm just going to get Cameron Robertson as a wing-back on defend. Um, and I'm going to also just get Neff to go wing back on defend as well, just kind of set in. I'm not going to change the system and go defensive because if we do get on the ball, I do want to move it and maybe get a fourth and kill the game off um, as well. But at the same time, wing back stay home, don't get caught out, and let's just make sure it's a 3 0 win at a minimum, which it is. And we get there 3 0. We have to thank our goalkeeper and Pagesi, a couple of massive saves in there. He's already looking the goods of the South African. Uh, but yeah, Marco's had a good game. But Bubba Fernandez, obviously, is a great experience to have in the team. Um, comes in and does a job. Neff obviously played quite well with the back as well. Kenny looked good getting up and down. Hoj yet again with another 7.5. He's brilliant. Bubba Najar, thank God, came off the bench, looked good. But Zahora scoring again. And Oscar Sandu didn't play too bad, but didn't really have enough time to influence the game. Now, look, we're 3 new up. We should be home and hosed. We should be able to go away to Bulgaria and kind of just know if we score one, it's game over. I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to play the probably the same team you've seen there again in the league against OB. Recap that one, hopefully, with a win. And then for the second leg, I'm going to rotate slightly, depending on what the game is after the OB game as well. We'll, we'll have a little bit, a bit of a look. Um, yeah, we're going to rotate slightly. We've got Copenhagen. Actually, though, in saying that, that's a two day. That's a two week break. Must be some international duty. We might go full strength against Botev um, again. Uh, uh, we'll play by ear. We, we might go semi rotated, semi not. Anyway, first leg down the drain. We won three 0 It was sensational. We looked really good, and even our goalkeeper and Pagesi had a very solid game as well. Next time though, in just a second, we'll be away in Bulgaria, and hopefully. We have a 3-0 lead. We don't throw it away. It's not a collapse. We go out there and we get to the round proper, the Euro Cup 2 group stage, and have ourselves some European football for the rest of the year in terms of the calendar year. Welcome back, YouTube. It is now time to play the second leg here against Botev away here in Hungary. It is Hungary or Bulgaria? Bulgaria? Bulgaria. Yeah, Bulgaria. We played a Hungarian team first up. Um, we did play OB in the middle. I did play the exact same lineup that you would have seen um, in the game previous, which was obviously the first leg. Um, apart from Zahora having a pretty much a shocker, we played quite well. And um, look, really, we could have made up four or five. Yepi yet again scored. So that's Yepi now. Since we've moved Yepi to Shadow Striker, Yepi has five goals in two games, um, and we scored goals in both games, right? Um, well, in the league at least, and we've scored in the cup as well. So what, six? I think we scored 11 goals in the three games. Yep, he's played Chatter Striker. Um, as you can see here, what a finish. What a ball from Otar. Um, you know, constant pressure we were in, and their clearance wasn't the greatest. Anyway, Bum the Jar gets on the ball here. Um, good ball to Kenny. It kind of, fall, you know, doesn't fall to us. The movement of Hoge. Hoge has come in and been that good that I've had to drop thank God to get Hodge to play with Kenny so yep he can play in the hole. It's kind of worked out. Anyway, this pass from Neff, what a ball from the Australian. Um, he is looking so good as well. I really am happy with the fullback. Unfortunately for ourselves, um, we do get hit on the break every so often because we're a little bit more aggressive. Um, they do very well and as, as much as Emperor Gessie has like 15 one on ones, he's a big boy. That started outside the post and killed its way in. I don't think there's much the keeper can do. But yeah, we're looking pretty good. Um, the only thing that I will note is that Zahora didn't play his best, unfortunately. Um, and Oliver Sandu did not have the greatest game up top either once he came on as well. He's still yet to get a goal. However, we have Bum the Jar that is now um, out for this game here. I'm going to bring the shoe to the bench, and there's a reason why I brought the shoe to the bench. Um, hopefully, when the game's dead and buried, the shoe can actually come on and play a game in Europe. Second thing is, um, is that we have gone pretty full strength, but not 100%. Um, Otar, Kenny, and Yepi are all on yellow card dramas. I do not want to um, really use them if needs be, but if the game gets tight, I will use them. Um, with that in mind, I've kind of rotated. Thank God can play very well in the box-to-box -box role. I want to see how well we can play there. Especially, I'm going to use Yepi now in the hole. We've got four best coming in. I wouldn't mind, thank God, who's on a rotation contract, even though he's so good. Um, to go in and just go and do what we need to do. Um, Hoja's form has been so good. He's averaging a 7.5. 
right? He, he, he's, he just, he's dead Dutch. He does everything right. It's perfect. It's good to see. Um, Jenkins, the Australian, has been banging him in on the B side. He obviously hasn't been playing. I'm going to keep him happy by just playing him in the sporadic game. Um, he still is um, he still is worth 1.3 million. It may get to the stage that next um, second half of the year might loan him out to another Super League side, see how he develops, and then look to sell him on. Um, Dolchek's been in the form of his life as well. He's come in and look really good. And Oliver, if there's uh, Oscar, sorry, not Oliver, if there's ever a time to go out there and score, this would be it. Please, just just get the monkey off your back and we can get on our way. Um, you know, he's been a bit unlucky. In a couple of games, he looked really good um, and keepers have made good saves. And in a couple of games, he's literally, all he has to do is put it in an open net um, and it has not happened. Anyway, Jenko and Oscar, my favourite players, according to Ali. Ali also reckons we're going to win the league. We're going to win the league. Are you going to believe us? We're going to win the league. I, I reckon, mate, that's not too bad. Let, let's just get through this game first. And then we've got Copenhagen and AAB in the league, which is really important to recap as well. Um, won't be doing that in this episode, but we'll do that next time out, YouTube. If we do not, well, we shouldn't throw this away, but if we do our job, all right, we do our job, we get through this tie with a slightly rotated side, you will see the um, Euro draw at the end of the episode as well. It's tomorrow, so we'll just sim to it. And um, Dim Sim records we're going to win 3-0 again. Um, I enjoy these matches a lot, so I'll take nothing for granted. I think we're going to get quite a different... Um, Botev side. I reckon they're going to come out here. They're going to give us a challenge for possession, um, and it's going to be like a 1-1, one, 2-1, one, one, either way sort of result. But we will be okay, and they will score. Anyhow, I've said this now. Oh, there we go. See? 10 minutes in, and they look very capable. It's hopefully we just don't concede early. That's all I don't want. Um, you know, we're slightly rotated. It is an international break coming up, so we didn't need a rotate. But just with the yellow card drama, I would rather them not be suspended for the first game of the group stage. Um, so, yeah, anyway, Bonev, good ball through. Emper guess he came and didn't get. It's one new own side, 11 minutes. Anyone else want to clench the bum quickly? They've got 80 minutes to score two more goals to bring it to extra time. One goal, we should be okay. Anyway, what a pass. Yeah, I think Emper guess he really should really get there and do a lot better. But yeah, there we are. Anyway, highlight here. Oscar doesn't win it, but it falls to Marquez. Heads in the thank God. His ball into Jenkins, the Australian. Finds Oscar. Jenkins on the run. Andreas Jenkins, just wide. Good movement, though. And you do think if we get an away goal, there's n there's not really a chance that they come in and win the game, you know, win the tie. So they could still win the game if we get an away goal. But I think with an away goal, what, they need, what, four to equal it, which wouldn't be enough. They need five on the night. If they score from the set piece, though, everyone get really, really, really worried. Anyway, Emper Gessi comes in and claims. He is very good. The keeper. Just need to give him time to develop. Anyway, Fernandez on it. Got numbers inside. Thank God. Bit of deeper line. He doesn't mind. A good ball out there. And Andreas is quick, the Colombian. And he is away. And he's going down the line. Still going. Beats another one. Good ball in. Dole check. How have you missed? A man in form. Scored four in the last five league games. Really? How have you missed that one? I think he has four goals in the last five league games. Not scored four in his last five league games. You know what I mean? Um, anyway, Neff, double check again. Back in the Hoge. Good ball to Jenkins, the Australian. Reels around. He's in good form, but really, he should really be slotting that. And yeah, look, we're starting to really dominate the game now after going 1-0 down. And this is where it was like, mercifully, we put a tie to semi to bed in the first leg. If this was the Osijek game, as much as we would have had like 30 shots by this stage, whatever, they would be going through. So mercifully, the, this this was, you know, this first half didn't happen in the last last episode, which we would have been staring, uh, being knocked out in, in the face. In the end, though, half-time, 1-0 down, nothing to worry about too much, but a second goal for them would make things very nervy. A goal for us kind of kills it. And Cameron Roberts finds, thank God, back to Cameron, his ball in, back stick, Dolchek, has thumped it wide. And the longer we keep missing chances, the more I'm going to get worried that we're not going to get in and win this game. All the tie. Because if they score one now, they only need one more. Roberts heads away. Andreas is there. Oscar's with him. Just needs to make a run and time it. In the end, Andreas going himself, which is okay for the Colombian if he scores. Puts it just wide. Hmm. I'm getting a little worried. Two shots, one. They've done not much. We're dominating. But you think that we've got a goal? I'm going to move Oscar out wide. I'm going to rest Dolchek. And I'm going to bring Zahora off the bench. And there we are. Very wasteful. I agree, Dim Sim. I agree. We shouldn't lose from here overall. But we might lose on the night at the moment because we are being quite poor. Anyway, Marquez on the ball. 
does well, back on the line in the Mr. Fernandez, would love a goal from this highlight and get Hoge off. So Hora doesn't win the header, but it should be Bubba Fernandez's ball again. And it is. Just pick your pass. I think he looks for Zahora in the space. Zahora there, getting towards the byline. Good run from him, and in the end, his effort straight at the keeper. I don't think we're allowed to score today. I wouldn't be celebrating just yet, Ali, because if they get a goal for the 80, if they're going to have, you know, 10 minutes or so to do it. I'm going to bring the shoe in, though. It's nice to get the shoe out there. Shoe loves a big game as well. And yeah, I don't want to do that one either. Oh, if they score now. They score now. They score now, you never know. Oh, they were that close to making my heart jingle. Making my... Yeah, whatever. Um, Christoph's not in... Um, Christoph is not in any real trouble. In terms of yellow card trouble here. So we're going to get Hoge off. We should be home. 20 shots, 10 on target. We haven't scored. TJ Reggie dance. I love that in the chat. It's good. Anyway, so Hora taking this. This is not normal. Jenkins, the Australian, in the end, has just fallen to that man yet again. Does he? Is there ever a moment where the shoe doesn't do it? Is there ever a moment? He, he's a one and a half star player playing in Europe and he's done it. And do, we, do we ever just not believe in the shoe? I think the shoe could play every game. It's kind of hit centre backs and fallen to him. But the shoe's just done it again. He always does it. It's always the shoe. In the end, it's game over. It's all she wrote. Hopefully, we get one right here and win it on the night. We don't. We've had 23 shots and only scored one goal, and it was the shoe. Look, I don't particularly mind. He's done it yet again. Have a look at him. He's one and a half stars. He is nowhere near it to do it. But the man, as Dimsian says, has bought his glory since day one. The original. The original icon. The original hero of the save. Just goes in and makes sure, hey, no embarrassment. We're going to win. We're not going to lose here. Don't worry about it. What a moment. What a moment. I'd love to see it. In the end, though, very well done, boys. I'm very pleased with the result. I thought we played sensational. Just on a different day, we would have been more clinical. I'm, I can't get Oscar Sandu to score. That's my problem. The guy is so good. Yes, we can book hotels now. Um, there was some Bassman. Um, Sid refused to substitute Neff. Um, it's none of their business. I thought we played okay. There we go. I didn't think we were too bad defensively. It just happened to be one of those days. All right, we're through to the next round. We get 2.6 mil for qualifying for the group stage. <laughs> Boys, we're making the money. Uh, that, that brings us back to that. Oh, yeah, looking good. I'm actually going to just uh, bring this down to make sure we're under the wage as well. Where's the draw? Right now. The draw is right now. 2.6 mil, and that's not even factoring in no TV money, if there's TV money for the Euro 2. That's not factoring in um, no group stage revenue. Um, as well, because imagine for draws and wins, you're going to get payout like you do in the Europa League. This could really be a year where we end with like more than like 12, 15 million in the, um, in the balance, which is cool. That basically just played for our new training facilities. Anyway, group stage being drawn here today. Who are the big teams in it? Well, PSV, Braga. Um, Braga is, but Braga are playing Wolfsburg. Wolfsburg and Braga are playing each other, so one of them are out. Um, Schachter are in it. Um... Zaragoza from the Spanish division are in it. Wolves are in it um, from obviously the Premier League. Um, who else? Another couple of big teams. There's a few. Um, let's just hope we just avoid them all. Um, under 19s, two players there. Um, I'm going to make eight here. Suggested the play. Um, actually, not these two because they're playing in the other ones. You guys, not Tony though. He's coming back from injury. Probably not Bob Najar either. The rest of these, yeah. Go play one game. Um, Schalke, um, maybe they're on the other side of the draw. We didn't check it. Um, but yeah, we'll have a look. I fancy a trip to Spain. I fancy a trip to anywhere, really, because I didn't expect to be here. Um, attacking fullback placed on the transfer list. Give that a bit. Holb. Philip Holb. The check is not bad. Could be someone. Spain, Slovakia, and Hungary would be perfect. We've already been hungry twice now. Last year and this year. Slovakia would be interesting. I'm going to go that we're going to get a really big side here. We're going to get England. We're going to get Wolves, I reckon. We'll see what happens. Maybe Wolves didn't get through. All right. We're seated four for the draw. Here we go. Let's have a look through. It's not fair, Midgelin, who have a poor year last year because they're coefficient. He gets a seed one. So we can't get into anything there. Right, so we got some big teams here. We've got Sporting. we got Victoria. we got Victoria as well. Dynamo's there. Renes, Wolves. Sparta Prague, obviously very, very, very good as well. Second seed's Red Star in there. Maribor. Sassuolo from Serie A. Zaragoza made it. Third seed's Wolfsburg, because they haven't been in Europe. 
Um, Hajak split, so they obviously knocked Saunders out. Um, and then in our fourth group, we can't play anyone here. Um, saying that, though, Grasshoppers is a former decent side there in, in Switzerland. All right, so what we're going to do is we're just going to draw out the first three groups here and just see what we want and where we can go. Right. Straight off the bat. Straight off the bat, we do not want Group A. I don't know who they are, but Dynamo and Wolfsburg would be deadly. Group B, we don't want either. Sporting and Saragossa, even though I think we'll have the beating of Dundalk. Group C would be the most even group. Shakhtar, Red Star, um, the Belgian Pro League side, and Zulet. Um, Zulte. Zulte. Um, all three very even sides. So, I think we really want to avoid the first... We want to really avoid the top line because we can't get Group D. So if we do not get put in the first three, we'll be okay. I would like Group E. Um, Turkey trip, partisan we would be. I think Group E would be not bad. And Group F, I think Renners would top the group over us, but that would be not bad. Group G would be, I think, on paper, the easiest group. Um, it would be competitive. Miamo, obviously, very decent. Um, the Cypriot side in Apoel, um, Victoria... Um, I think that's not actually the Apple well. That's um different side there. Um, Group H, though, would be very competitive as well. Sparta Prague, obviously, this year looked really good in the Champions League in real life. So Swallow, obviously, Serie A side. And Hadjuk Split get very good regions there in Croatia. I think if we're looking to get through a group, we want Group E, Group F, Group G. If we get any other group, we're going to have a hard time of it. If we get Group A, Group B, Group C, I don't think we get through. Group C would be very competitive. Um, and yeah... First out, CSK, so we miss out. That was the big one to make sure. This is the other big one. We get through that one. All right, one more, please, FM. Beautiful. All right. That's good. All right, is it going to be Group E, Group F, Group G, boys, or Group H? You let me know. Don't fancy E, because of England, Turkey, and Serbia. That is true. And to be fair, the Turkish side and Basikta would probably be very good on paper, but I just think at home we could beat them. The Turkey trip's the one that worries me. I think if we really want to get through, we want Group H or Group G. Oh, I'm sorry, not Group H. Um, Ali reckons we're going to get Group H. I think we want Group G. If we want Group, if we want to get through, it's Group G. If we want to get through, probably but finish second, it's probably Group F. Um, they do have the the um. Um, the Kavasi, the Kavacic, um twins there at Maribor. The, they're two regions with the same name, Alan. All right. I think for the drama, Group E would be nice. We don't get them, though. So it's F, G, or H. Won't you just win the group anyway? You win most games. Ha, huh, if only, Ali. Um, right. I want Group G because I think if we get Group G, we have a fair chance to top it. Well... It's either Group G or Group H. And there's definitely a group I want. There's definitely a group I don't. Because Group H would be interesting slash really difficult. Group G, however, and I think we could probably top it. It's not that. We're going to go to Group H. We're going down all the way to the bottom, boys. Group H. Group H, Group H, Group H. There you go. Last out. It's not the easiest. You have a Serie A side and a Swallow. We have Hadjuk Split, and we have, ooh, um, could have been worse, definitely could have been worse. And we have um, Sparta Prague. So Sparta Prague, unreal, right? Um, key player is the 27-year-old as well. Um, it's been a f seven seasons, though, so there might be some people that have moved from here. Adam Holzak is still there at 24, as if Adam Holzak has not moved. Makes no sense. How has this guy not moved? I thought by here, by, by now I would have moved. Right. Who, who's like their youngest player? Because they always get regens. Not bad at the centre back. What a midfielder. Jeez, this guy's going to play for um, Czechoslovakia really soon. Have a look at him. 17 passing. Good. Jeez, 19 to 10. Yeah, okay. He, he, he's, he's a little bit nutty. The wing is not bad. This guy's been called up and he looks decent. Goalkeeper is an actual player, but he looks good too. All right, so that Sparta Prague, really good. Hajak Split, best player is the Bosnian. Yeah, okay. Um, He has a bid though from Napoli, 4.5 million. Thank you, Napoli, because he probably will go. 
Outside of that, they've got Goran Tomic, who's loan listed. This guy's in my short list. Promising, yeah, hello. 10K, please tell me it's just because they're in my group. They're not willing to sell. Probably smart. And the left back is him. They're lining up kind of like that. This guy up top is pretty decent, the Spaniard. Portuguese a little bit as well. Hajak split, probably a team to get at. The attacking midfield looks good. And then Sosuolo. How are they going at the moment? So Sosuolo finished seventh, which would have got him in the... That Dominguez, that's not fair. He's worth 42.5 million. He's four times more worth than what my club's worth. Yeah, we will be getting on the um, first game of the stream tonight. How is that? Uh, that's not nice. Gasparini in goals as well. Yeah, okay. A hot prospect. This guy would even play for me. 14 finishing as a midfielder, by the way. What was my dog choking behind me? It's not. Okay, I must have been hearing things. Anyway, else we know? Danish international. We all know about Joachim. We, I think we're in trouble. They also got Alessandro. Wasn't he at Atlanta? Moved a while ago. He, he's been banging him in. Sebastian Esposito's up front. That's a swallow. Right. Well, we're going out. We're definitely not topping the group. So Swallow's about to pump every team in this bloody division about 8-0. They got Sebastian up top. He's not moved to a big club by now? No? Right. Who's this guy in the hole? Oh, my God. All right. Anybody else? Embuemo, I know who he is. He's decent. Wilfred Gonotto, has he developed? Still looks the quick. We're in trouble. They're 10th this season. Yeah, how many games have they played, though? They've played one game. It's only been one game in the Serie A. They drew 1-1. They probably would have dominated it against Cittadella too. They scored first minute. Domina didn't really dominate though. And then conceded late enough. They beat PAOK comfortably. Right. If I had the venture against we finished third. That is a very, very, very tough tie. This guy's 15. Yeah, get him in the shortlist. He might be decent. He wants to get in the shortlist. Thank you. Right. That. Well, it went well because we made the group. Oh, geez. It's only two games away as well. All right. Opening day of the season. All right. Next episode, I'm going to give you the Sparta Prague and the Swallow game back to back. I feel like playing the the two biggest sides straight up will be okay. Ali's going to go scout Hudge up split because he's from there this week, and that sounds good. All right, YouTube, this is going to be the episode. We're top of the tree in the in the in the, in the Danish league. Great, we're in Super League, we're doing well. We've got Copenhagen next. Great, not a problem. Unfortunately, though, we've got a very tough group. We've got Sparta Prague, who on paper really good, still have Adam Holes out, but Sassuolo look nutty. They have a very good very good players. Um, they still got, uh, well, they still got, they, they bought Esposito in up top. They're a team that looks like they're going to pump every team 5 or 6 nil. However, you just never know what this plucky little team from SFB can do. For our first time in the history, we made a group stage, and next episode, you will see the group stage live. From Damo and everybody else here, I'll see you next time. Thank you, and goodbye.